Hello and good morning. Um, my name is Dr John Lombard. I'm a lecturer in the School of Law in the University of Limerick. Um, thank you very much for joining us uh, for this morning's CAO Change of Mind webinar. Um, as part of this, I'll be discussing the programmes that we offer in the School of Law. I'll also be talking about the University of Limerick more generally, and it's an opportunity for you to, to ask some questions that you might have about what it's like to, to study law, what it's like to study in the University of Limerick and maybe some more specific questions about the various programs that we have on offer. So the next slide here um, sets out, if we can just set it up, there we go. The next slide here sets out uh, an outline of what we're going to be talking about um, over the next 20 to 25 minutes. So we'll start off by setting out an introduction to the University of Limerick. So setting out some of the, the strengths of the university and really, I suppose, why you should consider studying in UL. Um, going from that in, I'll focus on the School of Law. And with that, I'll highlight some of the strengths within the School of Law. These include strengths around research, strengths around teaching, um, and ways in which those strengths have actually been acknowledged. Um, we'll also discuss some of the resor resources that are available to students in the School of Law. Uh, from that in, I'll go on to speak about the various programmes on offer in the School of Law. So we have three main programmes that we'll be talking about. The first of these is Law Plus, the second is Law and Accounting, and the third is the BA in Criminal Justice. Um, after that then, we will be, I'll be passing over briefly to a Law Plus student, uh, James Redmond. Um, and James will be speaking about, I suppose, his experience of what it's been like to study Law Plus, and he'll perhaps give you a, a different perspective on what it's like to, to study in UL. So hopefully between my, pr my presentation and between James's talk, um, it'll give you kind of a, a rounded idea of what it's like to, to study in the School of Law. Um, before we kind of move on to the, the next slide, it's just important to highlight that I'm the, the course director for the, the Law Plus program. Um, so again, if you have any specific questions to that, make sure you put them into the uh, questions and we can get to them later on. OK, so why exactly would you study in the, the University of Limerick? So the University of Limerick was recognised as Irish University of the Year in 2019. So this is a kind of a, an acknowledgement, I suppose, of the resources we have, the teaching, all of the other elements that make up a university. So you can see some of the key elements that are set out and the key attributes of the university that are set out on the current slide. Um, UL is a, has an award winning campus with world class facilities, so I'm not sure if you may have had an opportunity to visit the campus um, prior to all of the, the shutdown, um, but it is an absolutely beautiful campus. It's a lovely campus to live on, it's a lovely campus to work on, um, so you really are spoiled when you're working and uh, studying in the University of Limerick. Um, we have the largest international exchange programme of any university in Ireland. So if you do decide to study law, you have opportunities to go on Erasmus in third year. But as well as that, we also have specific uh, study abroad arrangements with other universities. So, for instance, the School of Law has agreements with the likes of the University of Texas, the University of Victoria, and we're currently completing agreements with Dalhousie University and the University of Canterbury. So it means that students again in third year of the uh, of a law programme would have an opportunity to study abroad, whether that's in the US or in New Zealand or Canada, for instance. Uh, UL also has the highest percentage of graduates implied of any Irish university, 22% higher than the national average. And I think a key driver of this is the co-op placement programme. OK, and this is linked in with the next element here that UL is among the top three universities in Europe for career preparation through internships. So in any of the programmes that you decide to study in UL, so if it's Law Plus, Law and Accounting, Criminal Justice, for instance, you have an opportunity during your time in the university to complete what's known as the, the Cooperative Work Placement Programme. So this, was, uh, this takes place over the course of a semester and it involves a student going out, working, for, working with a company um, and really getting kind of real world experience during the course of their degree. And what we generally find from this is that when students come back from a co-op placement, 
placement that students are very, very focused in terms of what their career goals are, what they want out of the degree. And it, it really, I suppose, sets them up to, to succeed in the last year, year and a half of their time on the various programmes. OK, um, UL also has fantastic sport, uh, sports resources. Um, so you can see on the current slide, there's a number of images for this. Um, you have the UL Rowing Club, you have the UL Sports Arena, with the gym, 50 metre pool, indoor running track. Um, unfortunately, some of these will obviously not be available in the first semester um, if you do decide to study in UL. However, there are lots of other ways in which you can engage in sporting activities on campus. So, for instance, there's often kind of five kilometre timed races that take place during the week and even on Saturday mornings as well, there's five kilometre races that take place. And if you're around at the weekend, you'll see that there's always uh, activities taking place on campus. We normally get an email on a Friday evening setting out all the, the activities that are taking place over the weekend and it ranges from basketball, you have GA taking place, rugby on campus. So you're never short of uh, kind of extracurricular sporting activities to take part in. Um, moving then to the School of Law and why you'd want to study in the School of Law in the University of Limerick. So to study um, in uh, our university is to study in an innovative, enriching, student-centred learning environment. Uh, we have fantastic resources for students. This includes a moot courtroom. So we're one of the first universities in Ireland to have a moot courtroom. But we also now have a state of the art appeals court. So we've two on campus courtrooms for students to use. So we use these as part of various labs, tutorials for guest lectures. So they're regularly used. We also have a new law library. So the new law library is uh, again, it has the appellate court as part of it. And you'll see pictures on various slides where there's different types of various breakout rooms for students. There's different ways in which students can engage with the material. Um, and again, you'll see images of that in later slides. You also have the opportunity to learn from internationally recognised law experts and guest lecturers. So each semester we tend to host a range of different uh, academics from other universities around the world. And as part of hosting those academics, they'll often go on to, to deliver guest lectures for our students, both at undergraduate and postgraduate levels. So. For instance, in the last semester, we would have had guest lecturers from universities in Brazil, Portugal, we've had the US and also France. OK, and that would be very, very regular that we would have guest lecturers from other, univers other universities and we would draw on their particular expertise to, to feed into our undergraduate and postgraduate teaching. As mentioned already, there's paid internships for eight months. This is the, the cooperative work placement program, and we also have a straight, strong clinical component built into our degrees. So what exactly is meant by a clinical component? Well, a clinical component is really all about developing the practical st skills you need both for the study and also for the practice of law. And these clinical components are embedded in the various degrees right from the very, very first semester. So if you do Law Plus, for instance, you will be studying Introduction to Liaring in the first year. So you have two modules, Introduction to Liaring 1 and Introduction to Liaring 2. So as well as being the course director, I also teach uh, and deliver the Introduction to Liaring module. So you're normally kind of sick of the size of me by about week uh, five or six of the semester. Semester. But what we do in the introduction to liaring module and what you'd also do in, say, intro to legal system and method is you'll be introdu introduced to some of the key concepts in the study of law, but you'll also have smaller breakout sessions where we will look at issues like how do you read a journal article? How do you read a case? Um, a, how do you kind of, I suppose, how do you write uh, a law essay? All of these kind of key skills that you need at the very outset, so you're equipped with them for the course of the programme. We have modules on alternative dispute resolution, and in the final year of the programme, you will complete an advanced liaring project. So. The advanced layering project is often referred to as a final year project. It can be a large written piece of work that you undertake on your own, or it can also be a group 
project. So we run quite, we run a lot of these group projects. They're largely over they're overseen by one lecturer. The lecturer will have a, an idea of a particular project they want to undertake and will put out the call for students when they're in the fourth year of the program. So it's normally maybe somewhere between four to eight students will contribute to these various projects. Um, examples of projects in the past have included app development, so that's legal app development where students have worked on creating an app, uh, linking with industry as part of that and producing something kind of that would have a, a real world impact. We also run street law projects, so street law is where you would have students going out to secondary schools and students will deliver kind of a, a short uh, class on an aspect of law. So students will have to prepare it in advance to work out how best to teach it, to deliver the content so that students can understand it. Um, and an example of a project which I ran in the last semester was all about street art. So if you see those kind of big murals up on the side of buildings, what we did was we looked at the relationship between street art and intellectual property law. So we wanted to see, we wanted to discuss issues around ownership. We wanted to consider issues in relation to the reproduction of those artworks. And again, that was linking with local organisations and providing feedback and information which would be relevant to them. Uh, we have an exceptionally high employment rate. Uh, so this is particularly true for law and accounting. You can see the reference on the slide there. We almost have a, a perfect 100% employment rate across a five year period. I think it's probably a longer than a five year period at this point in time. So it really is a very kind of strong degree, especially when you're looking for employment afterwards. And we've strong international law links. As I mentioned, we've those Erasmus links, but also the study abroad agreements that we have with various in universities. The School of Law is also an award winning School of Law. Uh, we were Law School of the Year in 2017. We had the Grad Ireland Postgraduate Course of the Year in Law in 2018. We had two courses shortlisted this year and we also won the Disciplinary Excellence in Learning, Teaching and Assessment Awards in 2018. So if you're in secondary school and you're looking at what all of these awards are and it might seem a little bit abstract, the best way to really understand it is that they're a recognition of the research that's undertaken within the School of Law, but also a recognition of the standard of teaching within the School of Law. So it's not just that the lecturers within the School of Law are highly recognised in their own specific areas and their uh, and uh, our conduct research to a very, very high quality, but it's also that the research that they carry out, that they communicate it effectively, that they bring that research into the lecture hall into the classroom and that the students ultimately get the benefit of it. You'll also see that a lot of the lecturers in the School of Law have completed additional qualifications in teaching, learning and scholarship. So for instance, uh, some of the lecturers have completed higher diplomas, graduate diplomas or even master's programs in teaching and learning as well. OK, so it demonstrates we, now we not only take the research side of it seriously, but we also take the uh, pedagogical side of it very, very seriously as well. The current slide shows some of the images from the new UL Law Library. So we have state of the art law library. It opened in September of 2018. This was part of a, a 16,000 square meter Glucksmann library. So if you've driven into the university campus before and you've passed the big flagpoles by the entrance and you've driven down that kind of uh, winding entrance into the university, one of the kind of the first images you'll see is that second image on the slide there where you see that big glass facade and that's the, the library building um, is what you're presented with. And up on the top floor of that is where the law library is based. Um, so you can see some of the images there. You can see kind of one of the, the egg shaped chairs. So those are kind of uh, chairs for specific reading. You take a book, sit down, you can spend an afternoon reading there or an evening reading there and looking out on the kind of the, the very, very nice green, in, uh, green uh, landscape ahead of you. Um, we also have two purpose built moot court rooms um, to develop students lawyering skills. One of these is the appellate court and that's based in the new law library. Uh, we have a total of 340,000 books, there's 275,000 electronic journals and in recent months we've obviously added a huge amount of e-resources. So for any of the cases, any of the journal articles, they can always be accessed digitally. 
and recently we've expanded the number of ebooks that we actually have as well. So you don't actually have to be on campus to get those resources that you need. Instead, you can log on to the UL Library account and you click through, get the material you want, and it's just up on screen for you there. So very, very simple way of accessing material. Um, you can see there on the slide, we obviously have the, the image of the front of the library, but we also have an image of the appellate court. That's the third image in from the left hand side of the screen. And all those other images are taken from the law library as well. So we'll turn to speak to uh, speak about some of the programs now. And the first program to talk to or is the LLB Law Plus. So why choose the LLB Law Plus degree program? So the Law Plus program is essentially a law degree with something extra. Um, and that something extra might be a language, it might be a subject from the humanities, it might be something from psychology, economics, etc. And you'll see those elective pathways on other slides. The CEO points in 2019 for the program were 473. If you study the Law Plus program, each semester you take three core law modules and two elective modules. The core law modules are set out on the current screen. They include introduction to lawyering. You have criminal law, contract law, tort, constitutional law, land law, equity, EU law and advanced lawyering in your final year. And the way in which the program is set out, you can tailor your degree. So you can either do 60% law and have two non-law pathways, or you can take 80% law, which will be one non-law pathway. Um, the students will obviously uh, might have questions about whether they should do the one, not one non-law or whether they should do the, the two non-law. Um, you're not entirely left to your own devices in this regard. Um, as course director for the program, what I tend to do is to meet with each student in week one, discuss what their elective options are and consider what might be best for them and provide feedback as maybe appropriate. Um, this semester, you know, with things the way they are, it might be a little bit different, but again, we'll have those types of meetings, whether it will be a virtual meeting or hopefully some form of face to face meeting. You can see the elective pathway set out on the current slide. So we have the likes of extra law, you've public administration, politics, history, English, French, Spanish, psychology, economics, Irish, maths, German, sociology, Japanese and digital culture and communications. So the way in which it works is you would select one of these. So if you're taking, say, Irish, you would take an Irish module each single semester. So you'd have an Irish module in your first semester, second semester, third, fourth semester. It would be a different module each semester, but always kind of under that broad heading, um, under broad heading of Gaelga. And the way in which they're designed, they're designed to kind of have a, a natural progression to them. So you'd have Irish one, two, three and four to bring you through the various standards over the course of the programme. If you decide to take an additional law module, which a lot of students do, so as one of those additional electives they can take, they'll take a law module. You have options to take modules such as criminal procedure, evidence, jurisprudence, sport and the law, administrative law, commercial law, family law, labour law, child, company law, media, intellectual property and medical law. So in addition to intro, intro to lawyering, I also teach intellectual property law and medical law. Those are modules that are normally offered to students in third year of the programme. Again, students might be unsure as to what modules you can pick. And in those instances, it's always best to just link in with the course director. Again, send an email and we can discuss it. So you're always supported the entire way through the programme. Um, in terms of module selection. Um, so why choose Law Plus? So you have employability as a factor with the programme, so you have a rounded graduate, you, so you obviously have your experience in the area of law, but you also have some experience of a non-law pathway. So if you go for an interview, what will often happen is the interviewer will have been speaking to other people who've done a law degree, but they can ask you about your experience of perhaps studying economics alongside law, of studying psychology alongside law, and it just kind of brings a kind of a little bit extra for that candidate. Uh, it is a unique program in that you have the traditional, it's the traditional uh, law degree, but an, also an opportunity to study other subjects. You have flexibility in the choice of electives, and there's also an emphasis on practical skills and clinical legal education. So as mentioned already, we have the moot court, we have lawyering modules, and we have co-op education as part of the program. 
You have also opportunities to compete in and win national and international competitions. So our students often engage in moot court uh, competitions, uh, legal advocacy competitions, and you also have opportunities to study and work abroad. So these include your Erasmus programmes, internships and work placements abroad that are also on offer to law students in the School of Law. For further information on this, you can see the website. Uh, obviously, you can reach out to me at john.lombard.ul.ie or you can email the kind of the main email address of law at ul.ie and uh, they'll direct your query accordingly. OK, so the next program to speak to is the BA Law and Accounting degree. So as part of this, you have a law degree and you have an accounting degree. The CAO pints in 2019 were 437. So the pints were lower than Law Plus, but that shouldn't be taken as meaning that it is in any way easier than the Law Plus program. The Law and Accounting program is a really challenging degree. You obviously have all the elements of studying a law degree with all the elements of an accounting degree alongside that. But as mentioned earlier, it does have those, it does have a very, very high employability rate. So it does demonstrate the kind of the status and the recognition of this particular degree program. You the benefits of a giant degree. There's no presumption of prior knowledge in either discipline. So as mentioned with Law Plus, we bring you through at the very, very beginning with say a legal system and method with those core modules to build up your skills in the area of law. So you know how to read a case, you'll know how to read a journal article after the first semester, but it's the same on the accounting side. There isn't prior knowledge presumed, so your skills in that area are developed over the course of the programme. Cooperative education placement is in year three. Is again, this is an opportunity to apply knowledge in the workplace. Um, this can be a huge advantage for people in law and accounting. Um, it might be that if you're split between whether you want to go on and pursue a career in law or accounting after the program, the co-op period is normally a place where students make up their mind or have a much clearer idea of what they want to do afterwards after that experience. So it might be a student who undergoes a law placement and re re realizes that, well, this is something they really, really love and this is what they want to pursue. Or it might be that they go into an accounting placement and recognize that that's the route that they actually want to follow after their degree. This high employability as mentioned already and graduates are highly sought after from both disciplines, law and accounting. Because you have certain modules that need to be taken um, for both law and for accounting, you have a little bit less flexibility. The program is fairly well mapped out as to what you have to study each semester. So you've contract, criminal, EU law, constitutional law, tort, land and commercial law on the law side. And for accounting, you do the likes of financial accounting, statistics, finance, taxation, auditing and business ethics with the option of a final year project in year four. With career opportunities, then you've traditional career opportunities in law, such as barrister at law or going on to work as a solicitor. Um, uh, but you also have opportunities then to work as a chartered accountant, a financial analyst, investment bank, investment manager, um, equity trader, uh, taxation advisor, going into corporate banking as well as an option from this particular program. So again, with the law and accounting program, you have those law options, those career options open to you, as well as those accounting options open. Um, on the current slide, you can see the older moot court. So we showed images of the newer appellate court already. This is the original court that we had and still have. Um, you can see there there's a, a jury box, there's tables for plaintiffs, defendants, and you have the, the judges bench as well. Uh, we also have a live trading floor. For, so if you're a student of law and accounting, this is one, one of the elements you will want from the accounting side. Um, so again, you'll have access to all of these facilities. Exemptions are granted both on the accountancy side um, and you're also prepared for King's Inns and Law Society on the law side. So for accountancy, exemption arrangements exist with the main accountancy and taxation bodies, both chartered and certified. For law, the Law and Accounting program is a recognised law degree for King's Inns. You may need to take additional modules as part of that. If that is the route you want to go, again, the best option is to speak with your course director. They can identify the appropriate semester to take those modules and can give you advice in relation to registration and all other elements um, as well. Further information, again, you can see the, the law school website. The course director for this is Dr. John Heenahan. His email address is on the current slide. And as well as that, you can also email law at ul.ie. 
So if you email that, it'll be passed on to the relevant course director. So the final program to mention then is the BA Criminal Justice Program, and this is one of our newest programs on offer. The BA Criminal Justice builds on the considerable expertise within the School of Law and Criminal Justice. So we've expertise in a no is illustrated in a number of different ways. We have a specific research centre that focuses on this, the, on this area. So we have the Centre for Crime, Justice and Victim Studies, which is I think at this stage somewhere over 20 years old. Um, so we have a considerable body of expertise built up in this area over time. We also accredit the Garda Training Programme in Temple Moor. Uh, we have the BA Applied Policing Programme and Postgraduate Diplomas in a Serious Crime Investigation. We also have links with other criminal justice stakeholders. So these include victim support organisations, government departments. The benefit of having these types of stakeholder engagement is that we, our lecturers and the lecturers in the School of Law are closely involved with ongoing developments in the area, with ongoing discussions and conversations about law reform, but it also means that if we uh, want to offer guest lectures, we can draw on these various stakeholders. So it means that undergraduate students are getting the benefit of all of this knowledge as well. The BA Criminal Justice Programme is a modern and innovative interdisciplinary programme. In that sense, it combines the study of law with sociology, politics, public administration, psychology and management. So while I mentioned with Law Plus, you take law and say sociology or politics or public admin, all of these modules are brought together in this particular program under that broad heading of criminal justice. So you've high employability prospects in areas such as policing, security, the courts administration, the prison service, non-governmental organisations um, uh, such as victim support organisations. The CEO points uh, for this program in 2019 was 387 points. As part of the programme, you'd study law modules such as constitutional law, criminal procedure, criminal law, law of evidence and human rights. Uh, from sociology, you'd study the likes of intro to sociology, inequality and social exclusion, sociology of crime, deviance and social control. You've psychology modules listed and you can see you also have modules such as government and politics of Ireland, civil and public service, principles of organisational behaviour. So it gives you a real rounded knowledge of this particular area and you have the option of completing a final year project in year four. The programme also has a graduate entry law exemption. So graduates of the BA Criminal Justice are eligible for exemptions which allow them to complete the LLB graduate entry programme, a programme we also offer in the School of Law, in one year instead of two. So it's not only a two year in order to get the LLB, but if you start off with the BA Criminal Justice, I would like kind of a, a top up on the law side afterwards, you can go on to complete that LLB in one year. In order to qualify for the exemption, students have to complete the Law of European Union 1 and 2 in fourth year. Again, you get plenty of advice on this from your course director, Dr. Susan Leahy. So for more information, again, see the School of Law website. The course director is Dr. Susan Leahy. Her email address is on the current slide, or as mentioned, I think twice at this stage, and this is now the third time, if you contact law at ul.ie with any queries and they'll direct it to the relevant course director. OK, we have a number of points of contact here. So we've lots of school, we've the school of laws on lots of lots of different forms of social media. So we have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter account, we have a YouTube page. I think we also have an Instagram page as well. Um, or you can also look to the, the UL social media feeds on Facebook, Twitter, um, Snapchat, Snapchat and YouTube and so forth. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass over to our student, James Redmond, who will speak a little bit about what exactly it's like to, to study law and keep your questions coming in. And once James has spoken, we'll address some of those questions at that point. OK, thanks very much. Hi. Oh, yeah. Hi everyone, uh, my name is James Redmond. I'm a final year student in the School of Law in the University of Limerick. Uh, I'm going to talk this morning about why I chose UL to study law and the highlights for me in studying law in the University of Limerick. Uh, personally, why I chose to study law in UL is the variety of modules available. Like most people completing the CEO, uh, I was unsure of what I really wanted to do However, I had an interest in studying law. 
And that's why I think the great thing about studying law plus in UL is you have the options of undertaking uh, studies in economics, politics, public admin, sociology, and a variety of languages. I chose to study uh, public administration and the elective uh, law pathway. Uh, public administration consists of the studies of governance, uh, decision making, subnational uh, councils, and conflicts in diplomacy. Uh, but I think uh, after completing a number of interviews and internships, one of the main talking points which sets uh, UL students apart uh, from other law schools is the variety of the modules that we study. As well as that, another option or another reason why I chose to study in UL is because prior to completing my CO, uh, UL actually won uh, the University of the Year in 2015 and that, that was uh, really attractive for me. And another, furthermore, I think uh, the opportunity to go on a co-op placement is something which is invaluable and really unique for the University of Limerick and the School of Law especially. I undertook an eight-month placement in OSM Partners, a boutique law firm in Dublin too. Uh, whilst there, I saw really the realities of law, which was to study it, you get to see uh, the clinical law and practice on co-op. I was fortunate enough to attend the high course on a variety of occasions. I was I got to attend on council in the Court of Appeal and overall it was a very positive experience. Uh, on top of that, uh, as a result of completing my co-op, I was fortunate enough to undertake further internships as a result of the experience I've gained. And similarly, uh, in relation to the highlights of studying law in UL, I think the law community in UL is really close-knit and everyone is supportive of each other course directors are always there to support uh, students in applications, whether that be for sponsorships, whether that be for future career opportunities, or just in general if anyone is having an issue. Another reason why to study law in the School of Law in UL is the great friends you make throughout your time in UL. Um, myself and my friends were fortunate enough to uh, compete in um, an internal mooting competition supported by ANL Goodbody, and this provided us with the opportunities to advocate before uh, leading professors. Another highlight for me of studying in the School of Law in UL was the opportunity to study under great, uh, great legal minds. Really, whilst I was in first year, uh, like everyone else, probably in at the time, I watched Making a Murderer. And I was fortunate enough then in second year to be a uh, study under Dean Strang in jurisprudence. And even last year in the first semester, I was fortunate enough to attend a lecture by the former Chief Justice John Murray on the topic of Brexit and competition law. So unlike uh, other law schools, UL really puts an, a value on students' education. And similarly, I believe that as the co-op really is sets students apart, it allows students to really have a, an insight into the realities of the law profession. And whilst there is probably a lot, a lot of reading in the study of law, uh, I think it's we the lecturers at the start of every semester designate what needs to be read and they make it very clear. And besides that, uh, yeah, besides that, uh, I think UL is a really great place to study and I recommend it for everyone. Uh, so if anyone has any further questions, I'll be available in the Q&A as well. Thanks. OK, thanks very much, James, for that. Um, it is really good to get the, a student's uh, perspective on everything because obviously uh, we're going to be glowing or I'm going to be glowing when I'm talking about the, the School of Law. So it's very good to get the insight from uh, what the actual student experience is. 
Um, with that, there was a few points which uh, James mentioned. Um, so one was obviously the benefits around co-op and the second was uh, the types of talks that run at various exp expertise that students are exposed to. Um, there is, I suppose, a, a really good benefit in terms of the new law library and the resources that are available, because when we often run events and thinking of the event that was spoken about there, um, about the event on Brexit, that would have been an event which took place in the appellate courtroom. And it means that if we go up to the appellate courtroom for an event at half six or seven o'clock of an evening, there are students that are working up there. The event will start, students will filter in you get that type of experience, that type of exposure to new ideas. Um, you don't have to travel off to some other side of campus for it, and you can simply go back to your desk um, studying afterwards. Um, so it is kind of, I suppose, a, a really nice setup for students, the way in which it's uh, uh, set up at the moment. Uh, looking at some of the questions that are coming in, the first one was whether there's a trial period for modules, and when is the deadline for deciding your module? So. Um, for the law and accounting program, you won't have, a, you won't obviously have these types of options. It's very clearly set out what you need to study. It's the same for criminal justice. Um, there is obviously uh, much more flexibility with say the Law Plus program. Um, with that then, we would normally say that students, uh, students normally have to select modules by the end of week one. So what I normally do is, would, I, what I normally would say to students is to sit in and attend as many lectures as possible in week one. Um, I also, as I mentioned, meet with students. So I meet with each student. I discuss what they're interested in doing, what they're thinking about doing um, in advance and can give feedback on various modules and what, where their interests lie and what tell them what, you know, what modules you'll be studying. And again, we'll do that again this semester. So you will be supported in that way. Um, so you make your decision on the Friday of week one you didn't have a, a what's known as pre-registration in week five and this is where you select your modules for the second semester and normally during that week five period what i do is i set another check-in with students so that's another five to ten minute meeting with each of the students in the program so the number of students on the program we tend to keep uh, relatively lower we keep as low as possible so that we can have that type of contact with students so i'll meet with students in week five discuss what they're interested in doing in the second semester also discuss how they're getting along with their elective. Is the elective module something that they're interested in? Are they finding it difficult? And if they're finding it difficult and it's if it's not a good fit for the student, we then look at what options or what alternatives might be available for them. OK, um, so you're supported the entire way through with module selection, even if it goes to it, if it's year two, year three, you're finding a particular module very difficult or a particular pathway very difficult. You can always reach out and speak with the course director and you'll be given guidance in on what alter what options are available to you. OK. The next question um, is, will the university help students with getting work placement in relation to criminal justice? OK, so with this, uh, with work placement, this is overseen by the co-op office. Um, but the co-op office work very, very closely with the School of Law. Um, the placements are normally take place around year three of the program, uh, but we start preparing students for co-op placements at a very, very early stage. So generally we will uh, have events with the co-op office in the first year, second semester of a program uh, where the co-op office will set out what's involved, what type of placements we might be looking at, um, but we'll also do CV workshops. So we work with the students very, very early on. Um, this is normally something we do after hours. So again, you'll find that there is a real commitment from lecturers where they're not just on campus for nine to five and gone. They're there afterwards for other events that are taking place and other types of workshops. So normally we'll sit down with students for in the past, it's been maybe two to three hours of an evening where we go through and meet with each student. We look at the worst at their CV and we often it's the students have done absolutely fantastic work and it's just about trying to draw that out and highlight it as much as possible. So that's the first step is really setting out uh, and improving their CV. From that then, those CVs are generally circulated. The student will have met with the co-op office. They'll have spoken about what their, where their interests lie. And the co-op office 
do does tend to, to focus on placements that are relevant for programs. So for Law Plus students, they'll often focus on maybe legal placements. For criminal justice students, they're focusing on kind of maybe broader placements than just a legal firm. And for law and accounting students, they'll often be focusing on placements. If a student uh, in accountancy firms, if students obviously have a specific preference for law, they'll try to accommodate that as well, OK? So you'll find that there is really, really good engagement with the co-op office um, there's, no, there's normally really good communication from us in relation to it as well, or ideally there's really good communication from us so that you, felt you feel supported through the entire process. Um, and then after the co-op pro uh, co program ends, you're obviously back on campus at that point. And as mentioned, students really do tend to benefit from that particular program and that they come back, they're much more mature. They have a clear idea of what they want to do in their program afterwards. Um, and they know what they want out of their program as much as anything else, which is, you know, it's it's br brilliant for us to see that students have kind of taken that ownership and that control of their education and they're very clear where what they want from the program and how it can contribute to their career goals. OK, so let's scroll down. There's a few more questions. Um, is there guidance when choosing work placement? Uh, yes, there's lots of guidance given to you. OK, so you obviously have the, the early engagement in first year. You have more meetings in second year and the co-op office have specific meetings that are set up just for law students. Um, you'll also find guidance from other students or students who have gone who've been maybe the years ahead of you and they'll provide feedback um, as well. OK, um, what are the most popular electives? Um, this is really difficult to, to say because it changes every single year. Um, a few years ago, psychology was really popular. Um, then for some reason, as James said there, he's a, his elective is public admin. Public admin became a really popular option for students to do. Um, economics is often uh, a module that students are, are a pathway that students are interested in. And we normally have a, a, a share of students then that are split across the, the various electives. So it does tend to change year, year to year. Um, but at the moment, public admin is probably one of the, the higher ones that are uh, that seems to be one of the more popular options for students. Um, but other than that, all the other pathways are clearly planned out, clearly mapped out. So if you do the likes of economics, there's a very clear progression the entire way through the program. It's the same for all of the languages. So you start with, say, fr French 1, French 2, French 3. Uh, it brings you the entire way through right up to four year, up to fourth year. So there's kind of a, it recognises a learning curve in the module. OK, criminal justice then. In relation to criminal justice, uh, are there many students who apply to join the Gardaí and is the course a good stepping stone to gain entry into Ungarda Um So we obviously have links uh, with Ungarda Siakana. Um, it would seem as if from students who are, are uh, nearing the, are close to graduation, graduating with the BA Criminal Justice Programme, as we said, it is an, a relatively new programme that has been introduced, that a lot of them are interested in going into that career afterwards and joining the guards. Um, we don't have figures at the moment to kind of definitively say that that is the course that they do decide to, or that, that is the direction that um, they do decide to progress in. But it certainly seems to be for students entering the programme, that's one of their interests is that they want to then go on and join the uh, Ungarda Siakana at a later point in time. Um, but it's too early to say whether we have a, a lot of students that ultimately pursue that after the end of the programme. Um, OK, the next question, would you advise including criminal justice on your CAO uh, with uh, the intention of doing a master's as well as including law plus on your CAO if you're hoping to pursue a career as a solicitor? Um, OK, um, so it's really positive anyway that you're interested in the School of Law um, and the options that we offer. Um, if, if I suppose I'm going to be biased because I'm the course director for the Law Plus program, um, and I suppose if if it's a career as a solicitor is what you're interested in, then I would perhaps suggest leading with the Law Plus degree program. But certainly do include the Criminal Justice program on the CA on your CEO application as well, then, because you can obviously go on and do a master's afterwards as part of it, but you can also go on and complete the, the LLB grad entry in one year. So you do have those options that come from it as well. 
in the criminal justice program, you will have exposure to law modules, but you'll also have kind of a, a broader exposure to areas around sociology, psychology, um, politics, etc. And it might well be that you go in with an intention of becoming a solicitor, but you're really, really drawn to the modules around sociology and you change career direction as a result. OK, um, so that would be my suggestion is perhaps lead with law plus um, uh, if it is a career as a solicitor is what you're interested in. Uh, what kind of work experience would you be doing as a, a criminal justice student? Um, so with that, we have some students that are placed in court services. We have students in government departments. We would have students in law firms. So again, it's a, a broad range um, that crim a broad range of locations where the criminal justice student would be placed. Um, the next question, uh, when I'm studying a particular module during the Law Plus course, such as history, can I go into further study into that particular topic after my undergraduate degree? OK, um, so uh, with that, uh, I did what would have been a precursor to the Law Plus program, uh, and it was Law and European Studies. And as part of that, we would have had, uh, we would have taken also non-law pathways. And a person who I'd been very good friends with did the history pathway and they're now, they went on to complete a PhD in history afterwards and they're now a lecturer in history. So when you do take that non-law pathway, um, you do have another option afterwards. So it depends on the route you're taking. Certainly I know with history, there obviously is, I, I, I can tell that you can go into postgraduate study in that area if it is an area you're interested in, okay? Uh, what are the possible locations of co-op work placement in law and accounting if one chooses to go abroad? Um, this might be a question to direct to the course director uh, of that programme, John Heenahan. Um, he'll have a, a better insight into where law and accounting students have been placed. Um, so what I'd suggest is if you email law at ul.ie with that particular query and he'll be directed to Dr. John Heenahan and he'll be able to get back to you shortly. Okay. The next question then, um, is it expected that the first year will be online? And if so, how will Law Plus be taught? OK, so the issue of online and face to face teaching is something which the university has been discussing and all other universities in Ireland have been discussing and considering how do we move forward and what's the best option? Um, it's likely that there will be some elements of online teaching, but we are also hoping to include a large element of face to face teaching. Um, in the current kind of draft plans that are, are going around or being circulated, we hope to have first years on campus at an early stage so that we meet all of you and um, that we'd be able to give that advice that I mentioned in kind of a, a face to face manner. But again, more details will have to be set out um, over the course of kind of the, the summer and so we have a clearer picture of what we'll be doing. As it stands, we do have other programs that we traditionally offer as online only programs. So a shift to online teaching is not something which is, you know, completely alien to us. We have experience of delivering modules online, of uh, delivering tutorials online, of delivering lectures online. So we'll be drawing on that experience and bringing it to perhaps the undergraduate level. Um, what we would expect to see is that there will be perhaps some live lectures that might be delivered. There will be still opportunities for engaging, engaging with lectures in different ways. Um, and again, I suppose more details are to, to be revealed, but the general plan from the university or indication from the university is that they want to encourage as much face to face as possible. OK. Uh, the next question then. Um, so what are the other jobs the criminal justice students are looking to do after they graduate? Um, so with that, you do have some students that are interested in going on to work as uh, solicitors or barristers. And I suppose that's been one of kind of the other driving uh, or one of kind of the other main career ambitions for students at the BA criminal justice program. And it's for that reason then that the, uh, it's for that reason then uh, that uh, the uh, LLB, uh, the LLB entry was uh, provided that exception. So it means that if you do 
do criminal justice and that's the, the career option you're looking for, then you have a very easy way of uh, moving over into the law area and getting your LLB qualification. Um, OK, so the next question is, do you think the, the course points will go down this year? Uh, is it a very popular class each year? Um, so uh, it's it's impossible to say what way the core, what way the the pints will go or CEO pints. Um, and this is often a question that does come up and we can't forecast what the, the pints will be. Um, we obviously know what our kind of general student intake is and with the student intake we do control it to some degree because like I said for these programs we want to make sure that we can deliver high quality material that we have good engagement with students and in order to do that it means that we do have to have kind of these smaller numbers so with law plus where I said that uh, you know our number our intake is relatively low with that it means we can have those labs it means we can have tutorials we can have a lot of kind of face-to-face -face meetings as part of it it means you get a better reference at the end of it you've more engagement with the lecture as part of it um in order to determine what, what the points will be it's a combination of de demand and what the students points are so um i really can't give an answer to it um and i i don't know what points are until they appear in the paper so i'm the same as anyone else unfortunately here Okay, um, so that's a lot of questions ran through there very, very quickly. Um, if there's anything I haven't addressed, then I would suggest uh, getting in touch with law at ul.ie. So if it's something relating to the Law Plus program, it'll be directed to me. If it's anything with criminal justice, it will be sent to Dr. Susan Leahy. And if it's anything with law and accounting, that will go to Dr. John Heenan. And I know all of them would be more than happy to, to respond to any queries that you might have um, when you're interested in uh, completing or, or putting down uh, one of those programs on your CEO. OK. Um, I might give it uh, just one more kind of minute. So if there's anyone with any other questions that I haven't uh, gotten to yet, if you could type it in very, very quickly uh, before we finish up. OK, I don't think there's anything else coming in at this point. So what I just want to say at this stage is uh, thank you very much. Oh, sorry, there's one question has come in. Um, after Law Plus, what are the next steps to become a solicitor and how well does Law Plus set you up in the world of law? OK, um, so the next steps to become a solicitor after completing the Law Plus program is you go on to uh, sit your FE1 exams. Um, so your FE1 exams are required, your final entrance examination ones. Um, and they're uh, the exams which you must sit in order to uh, qualify uh, for Black Hall Place. And Black Hall Place conducts the professional training. The way in which the FE1 exams are run has changed slightly in the last few months. There now seems to be an option whereby if a student is in final year of their program, that they can sit some of those FE1 exams. So I know we had a, a student in the, the last semester who was interested in doing that. So even before they had graduated, they were planning on taking those next steps to become a solicitor. OK, so if you get your law degree, you'll go on, you'll sit FE1s and you'll complete your professional training in Black Hall Place. Um, as for how well it sets you up in the world of law, um, I think that the law plus, law plus degree is, it really is an excellent degree because you have exposure to all of those law modules. You have your core law modules, you have your elective law modules, but you also have that something extra with it, whether that's exposure to public admin, whether it's exposure to history or it's a language, for instance. It really is kind of a, you never know when that elective is going to be used at some point in the future. So as mentioned, I did the precursor to the Law Plus program with Law and European Studies. I would have done a language as part of that as well. That would have been French. And quite a lot of my research now also links with the French legal system. And the reason I can do that is because of the, what would have been essentially the Law Plus degree. It set me up to actually give me the skills needed to, to undertake that type of work and that type of research. So the Law Plus program really does set you up in the world of law. Um, not only, I suppose, for the content, but also for the relatively small to small classes that you have as part of it. 
um, and also the co-op work placement and clinical program. So there's quite a lot in it uh, uh, as part of it. Um, someone has a question about the New York bar and um, whether you'd have to sit your FE1s in order to sit the New York bar. Uh, no, uh, so the FE1s would be distinct from the New York bar. If you have an undergraduate law program, it obviously has to satisfy certain requirements. Um, and the as, as, uh, as far as I'm aware, the last time I would have looked at this was about six months ago. The Law Plus program does satisfy the requirements for sitting the New York bar. So you would be able to sit the New York bar directly after completing the undergraduate program instead. Um, the, the requirements for the New York bar obviously uh, can change from time to time. We are more focused on what the requirements are of the Irish, uh, of the Irish body, such as Blackhall Place and King's Inns. However, if you do want to go on and sit in New York Bar, we do support you and provide whatever information they might require uh, in order to ensure the validity of the program as part of that. Okay. I think we're just coming up on 12 o'clock or we're getting close to it. Um, so we might have to, to stop at this point. For any other questions that come in, um, what I'm going to do is I'll be able to stay on the live Q&A for a little while and I'll respond to any of them within the chat function. So what I'd like to do at this stage is just to thank everyone who's logged in this morning, who's taken the time to listen to this presentation. I'd also like to thank, obviously, our administrators, Katie and Una, who assisted in setting all of this up, and also thank our Law Plus student, James, for taking time out of his morning to, to sit down and to, to discuss what he thought of the, what thought was the, the strengths of the Law Plus degree programme. OK, um, thanks to everyone who logged in and uh, I hope you're, you consider putting uh, Law Plus, uh, criminal justice and law and accounting on your CEO forms. Um, and I hope to see you on campus in the near future. OK, thank you very much and goodbye.